Today on the Designing Technology channel, I'll be machining a pair of soft jaws so I can complete OP2 of my CNC machine speed vice handle project. Have you ever wondered how CNC machiners hold intricate shape parts to complete their second operation? Well it's really simple to do and I'm going to demonstrate how to CAD model, CAM and CNC machine these using Autodesk Fusion 360. Okay, I've got Fusion 360 loaded up and uh, running here on, the, on my laptop. And what I want to show you here is how I move from machining the top half to machining the bottom half, okay, operation two. And you can see here that I've designed a set of soft jaws around my component. And you can see it here. Now, what you're probably wondering is how did I get to this point? And this is what I'd like to spend some time showing you now. So let's, let's start off from the beginning. Uh, I'm going to create a new design. And straight away, I'm going to save that new design. I'm just going to put it here, uh, video test. Straight away, I'm going to start what's called a new uh, new component. Now, I'm going to be doing this in a top-down strategy. Now, if you're confused about uh, bottom-up and top-down and you don't uh, understand it, there's a really good video that Kevin Ellingson from Mechanical Advantage on his YouTube channel has just done recently. I'll put a link to that down below in the description, and I'll show you a little bit here in the browser as well. So what we're going to do here, straight away off the bat, assembly, new component. Now, in this new component, I'm going to type in here soft jaws. And I'm going to click the parent level, which is that one, and click OK. I'm going to click create a sketch. I'm going to click the ground plane. Please note that I'm drawing in, or I'm designing here in Z up today, not wire. Click the ground plane, R for rectangle. Now I'm going to come up to the top right hand side of my sketch palette and pick center rectangle. I'm going to snap it, make sure it snaps at the center point and drag out. Now the width of my soft jaws are 80. Okay, they're actually, they're actually 70 but I'm going to put a 10 mil spacer in there so I've got a gap and that will allow my soft jaws to cramp up onto the, onto the workpiece that I need to machine. Now once I type the measurements in I tab tab and you'll see the little padlocks appear. That means the dimensions are now locked in. E is the shortcut for extrude, click E, click on that sketch that you just drew. I'm going to go up 37, 37, and click OK. Now here's my basic soft jaws block, okay. I'm going to save that. Now straight away I'm going to get out of it here and click at a parent level up the top, okay, and activate it at a parent level. I'm going to come over here to my data panel, I'm going to right click on the, on the part that I want to insert here today. I'm going to use this one as an example. Right click on it. I'm going to insert into current design. Wait a minute for Fusion 360 to go up to the cloud and to, and to bring that down and it'll populate here. Here we go. All right I'm going to rotate. You can see here because Mickey V drew this uh, in a Y up orientation I've just got to rotate it before I start playing around with it. So I'm going to rotate it up here. I'm going to move it up a bit higher for me and I'm roughly going to center it just by looking at it really quickly here. Okay, I'm not going to get too fussy with it. I'm going to click OK. The very next thing I want to do, I want to put a mate, okay. It's what we call in normal parametric drawing in uh, PTC or SOLIDWORKS was called mating. Now Fusion uses joints and uh, if you want to learn more about joints I suggest you go to Kevin's channel. He's got a video up on joints and yes, the joints as in parametric joints, not the smoking variety. Here we go. I'm going to click that bottom face here guys. I'm going to zoom in so you can see it. I'm going to hold my control key and that will allow me to snap to that center of that hex there. Come back to my ISO view, click the top of my block that I drew, control key, snap the coin over to the side and click to activate it. Now in the Z guys I want negative, so negative is going to bury it into the part and in the Y offset here is going to be 5 and I know it's 5 because I've previously done this off camera. Now to prove uh, my concept here, I'll just show you. I'm going to click inspect, click the round face there and that face here. You can see them on maximum distance is 15 mil. Escape out of that. I'm going to come around to the other side, drag over. And just to prove a point, I click that line and that face and you can see 15 mil. So I know I've got my part centralized in there in that block and that's how I want it. If we look at a top view, you can see that that's going to work nice for me and that's really going to grip that part well and uh, the milling machine shouldn't rip it out of the vise. Now here's a really cool trick. Now I picked this up um, 
off, an, off another uh, YouTube evangelist, and I've previously shown him before, and that was Taylor Stein showed me this trick on one of his videos. So before I move on, click Save. I'm going to click on uh, Modify, and I want the one here called Combine. We click Combine, and it's going to say, what's your target body? Well, my target body is my block. What is my cutting tool body? Well, I'm going to use that tool there, my part. I make sure that the operation says Cut. I'm not going to click New Component, and see here, it's already got my Keep My Tool. Um, it's already selected there, so I click OK. Now, when I turn off my part, you can see here's my shape here. Now what I want to do, I want to get rid of these little center pieces here. So I'm going to use the little tool called Press Pull, which is a shortcut key is Q. Now if you want to learn more about Press Pull, Lars Christensen did some on his YouTube channel. Okay, here I'm going to select this one here guys, and this one here. Now make sure it's got to say New Offset. Okay, click that one, click that one, and I'm just going to bring it down 10 mil and click OK, and I've gotten rid of that. What I want to do now, I want to put my 10 mil spacer up in here. I'm going to model that, and I think it's a bit easier to model it, so I'm just going to rotate this around. So from my home view, I'm going to click that face, and I'm going to click R for rectangle again. I'm just going to draw a rectangle over here, and my rectangle needs to be 10 tab by 110 tab. Notice when you press the tab, the little uh, locks appear. I'm just going to mechanically, or you know, drag it over with the mouse here, and snap it onto that sideline there. D for dimension. Click the bottom one there. Click that one, drag out, and this will be 35. Now you've got to remember, guys. So my width of my part is 80. Okay. So 80 subtract 10 is 70. Half of 70 is 35. Okay. I'm going to drag that dimension out so you can see it. I like to, uh, I'm a bit anal like that. I like to get all my uh, dimensions lined up. It was probably drummed into me when I was a high school student back in the day. Okay, I want to extrude cut that now. So I'm going to press E for extrude. I'm going to click that center rectangle that I drew. Uh, sorry, the rectangle that I drew in the center and just drag it up. Ensure that it says cut. And there we have it, guys. Here's my soft jaws part. Now, all this, you can see they're ready to go and I'm ready to start camming, okay? Now, if you want to, there is an app for Fusion for soft drawers. Uh, Michael Connor Woodwork pointed it out to me the other day. He sent me the email link. Um, I'll flash it up here on the screen in a second here and tell you what that's called. Now, I won't show you the whole camming thing here. I've already done it previously, so I'll just save that for a second. And I'll shut this one. I'm going to bring up the part that I've previously cammed. I'm going to turn off this one here and go to my cam now and show you how I set this up. Just going to populate those, uh, generate those tool paths. Okay, so here we have it. I'm going to activate that, and this is this is my strategy that I use. Now this was a little bit more complex than the first one, uh, probably because it had a couple of on open contours there. And you see my part's going to come around and um, machine that off. I just changed the viewing so you can see it. I'm going to do 2D adapt. You clear it with a 10 mil end mill, so 10 mils roughly 3.8 guys around that size. And you'll notice here in my cleanup, I'm leaving 0.75 of a millimeter on the wall thickness there to clean up with. And I'll go over to the next one. I'll buzz that up, buzz that. Now, when I talk about open contours, guys, if you want to learn more about open contours, I suggest you go and look at Kevin Ellingson videos and he will show you how to get it. Now, when I did my Instagram live feed the other day, I had my um, height set up here, my work offset set up, so at any time I flip the part, I don't have to touch the Z height again. Now that was quite easy to do because if you look here, guys, if you look at my, I'll put it here in a front view so you can see it. Have a look where I've kept my G54. I've kept my G54 in the exact same spot for both parts. So at any time when I when I buzz that part and uh, I took the hat off it and I wanted to flip it to um, because I wasn't happy with the, t with the top chamfer that I originally did. I wanted to take a bit more off that. I could just flip it straight away and run that chamfer contour. And uh, you can see here in my thing. So this is where I buzzed the hat off. Okay, and then I cleaned up the hexes, the circle. And then I went around the outside here as well and took a bigger bite, gave it a, a nicer chamfer on there as well. 
Alrighty, well, uh, how about we go over to the mill? I hope that's given you some insight on how to create your own soft jaws. Uh, like I said, um, there is a app that you can put into Fusion to make your soft jaws. Uh, I sort of like, I sort of have fun drawing my own, but you know, I lead a boring life, so I suppose I've got the time to do it. And uh, all right, I think that's enough for me about the CAD CAM. Let's uh, jump on the machine and let's make this today. Tim Paul and I'm no uh, true creation sensation but you know what I'm pretty happy with that <laughs> 